Hi everybody and welcome back to Mommy Your Own Way. I'm Lily Coco and today my guest is Kylie Etz and we're going to talk about uh, infant development, infant sleep, but more so the pressure that the society has created us and maybe some tips, tricks, and some information that we can help the infants and the parents to have more successful relationship in life with their little ones. So let's just start and dive right into it. Kylie. Hello, 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 and thank you for being on the show. I'm so excited to talk to you. Um, I was looking through, and you have, let me see, a uh, reflex specialist, pediatric kind of sleep specialist, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know what? The infant stage and toddler stage, all the stages are difficult in their own way, first mm -hmm. of all. Sleep is like its own... <laughs> mystery right you got to take a pirate ship over to that island to try to discover the treasures but more so i think in today's world and you know what let's not excuse the the in all generations it's like this mystery because everybody wants the same thing right they want the baby to sleep the baby to develop we want everybody to be rested and that's for the baby because I think they really grow when they sleep, right? And mm -hmm. I think it's important for the mommies and the daddies and the families to also get sleep because when it comes to the mental, uh, like just the mental load, the the physical load, when you are not rested, mm -hmm. that can just really shape your entire experience. Um so I do want to talk about sleep, but it seems like if I, you have knowledge, right? This mm -hmm. richness and knowledge of all these other facts. So whatever I can pull out <laughs> of you for all the tips and tricks for self, yeah. uh, for others who are listening. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being on. Hello, hello, good morning. I'd love to hear all about it. Let's start. Let's talk about you. I'd love to know your story, your journey, and then let's dive into all the the, the specialists that you are. I don't want to miss the opportunity to learn everything I can from you. Yeah. So my journey, so I'm, I'm also a pediatric occupational therapist, and that's sort of where my my journey really began. Um, I've loved babies and kids my entire life. Like even from the day my sister was born, I was almost six years old. And I basically, I don't remember this, but my parents have always told me that from the day she was born, I was like, she's my baby, I will take care of her. <laughs> and Aww. I did proceed to do that, right? Like I proceeded to always want to be involved in taking care of her. Um, and so my love of babies, like I've done camp counseling and, and tutoring and babysitting and all of the things my entire life. And so pediatric occupational therapy just seemed like a very natural progression into a profession that would allow me to really work with babies and kids. I had thoughts that maybe I wanted to be a pediatrician, but I really wanted to actually like work with them, not just like right. assess them and diagnose them yeah. and all sure, of the sure, things. Sure. Um, and so that led me into pediatric occupational therapy. And then when I had my own children, like this has always been my dream of having like, I've always wanted to be a mom. So that was something that I just knew right from like day one, it's always been in my sort of heart. And um, when I did have my first, so my son will be almost eight. He's, he's almost eight, so he'll be eight in August. Um, and I, because I had all this experience with babies and I had all this knowledge and training from my occupational therapy, I was like, this is going to be so easy. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, I know how to, you know, help my baby's development and I know how to yeah. do all of the things. Yeah. And wow, my, the birth of my son rocked my world. <laughs> really? And, you know, I think this is just so almost empowering, not to hear that you had a struggle yeah. with it, but to know that, because I think in motherhood, you know, also in parenthood, we all feel a little lost. And so it's like, mm -hmm. well, maybe if I had this not, you know, but it's like, even I had the knowledge it, and it still <laughs> and just hits still you. Like, oh my gosh, I found myself overwhelmed, confused, exhausted. Mm -hmm frustrated my baby didn't like tummy time and I was like that's right. so important how do I get my baby to like tummy time like what's going on um I was you know I was going to all these different baby classes and I would compare my baby my and I was like oh my gosh right. I know not to do that but right. in my heart I was still comparing my baby you know that five month old in the class is already sitting up and my baby like isn't even doing tummy time right like there were just so many of these stressors yeah. um and then when it came to sleep, I didn't really know anything about sleep at that time. 
And so I was downloading all of the schedules and I had right. printouts of like, okay, at this age, my baby should be doing this schedule, but then this schedule over here says something different. And I remember I went away for oh. a few hours, I had to go to the doctor's and mm -hmm. my husband was just home with the baby. And I think he was like, maybe like four months old. And my husband was like, so uh, which schedule do I do? And I was right. like, I don't know. I don't know. Just choose one and do it. Right. It was stressful. It was really stressful. I'm just getting like a flashback of the <laughs> newborn stage because I also I had my notes app, right? And mm -hmm. I had, okay, we open window, oh, wake window. Here yeah. we go. Okay, let's make sure. Um, yeah. And through my pregnancy, we were in COVID, so we didn't get a chance to go to any of the baby classes mm -hmm. or anything like that. And I was just kind of pulling my information from, from the, the internet. Online. <laughs> right, right. And, and the, the richness of the amount, right, of the specialist mm -hmm. that is out there is on one, and I've said this before, but on one side, it's so wonderful, right? Mm -hmm. We can read and research and really find the answers, but it also is so overwhelming because mm -hmm. it's Oh, but it would be impossible to create a one for all, right? Because it is going to be very different with uh -huh. the babies. Not only that, but your own personal routine is such a big mm -hmm. part of it. Um, plus C's. I mean, there's just so much into it. But mm -hmm. just hearing you talk yeah. about it, I had like PTSD. Yes, like I, remember, yeah. I remember reading yeah. those and I'm like, well, we have to lay down now. And then I, I had know. one day where my baby didn't sleep. Something was off and she just wasn't sleeping. And it was like... 17 hours that she didn't sleep and so I was like oh my gosh this is it like I have failed completely first of all mm -hmm. let's just start there you know the guilt creeps yeah. in real fast and uh oh gosh that comparison and this is this is a big piece of where our stress and our overwhelm comes from in motherhood right. we right. unconsciously put this stress and overwhelm on ourselves because right we are either comparing our baby to other babies or we're comparing our baby to some magical thing that you read on the internet that you think you should be comparing your baby to. Right. And also, I really have a dislike for these wellness baby checks where you have to check off the boxes and they're like, oh, is your baby sitting at six months? Are they pointing? Are they clapping? Right. Are they doing this? X, Y, right. Z. Um, right. Because first of all, those checklists are like really outdated. <laughs> And those are from like the 80s, back when our parents were told uh, to put their babies on their tummies to sleep. And our babies were stronger then because we didn't have all of these baby containers, right? It right, was right, not right. as convenient. So our babies were, babies at that point were like, that's my generation. <laughs> we were put on our bellies like to sleep. We were put on our bellies on the floor. And so we were really a lot, babies were a lot stronger and meeting their milestones earlier. I and remember so, reading that about the, yeah. the baby containers okay. and um, how before, yeah. I mean, this article was talking about like the 1800s when like the, <laughs> the, the mother is still like, you know, picking yeah. the feathers off the chicken while she's cooking it. <laughs> right. And so the baby's just on this hardwood floor. And so yeah. of course they would learn to push themselves up, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but it almost puts paints this like really survival yeah. uh, picture. G g yet... If I'm going to speak for today's generation, mm -hmm. right, for the containers and all of that, yeah. I think it's important to remember that th maybe the moms isn't plucking the chicken, right? <laughs> but the moms are working right now, and the moms need a way. Because I think I've been in both places where I've been accused of, like, um, I we did have a baby swing, and so someone's mm -hmm. like, oh, my gosh, you're ruining your baby. And I didn't even know about this, and I was like, I was just trying to – you know, ah. you're trying to help your baby because they're they, ah. they're calm when they're moving and they sleep better right. when they're moving and right. you know they're all nice and snuggled up and so this is this is definitely a thing that also causes stress and overwhelm. In my mind, okay, I don't love baby containers. However, in moderation, when you need to make dinner, when you need to have a shower, when you need to have your baby somewhere safe so that you can have like some sanity while you're drinking your hot coffee, right? <laughs> right? right. Like fine put your baby in there. But then yeah. when it's time to play when you know, you guys are on the floor, if you're just folding laundry, or you're, you know, listening to like, if you're working from home, and you're listening to a meeting or something, have your baby on the floor, yeah. you could have them on the floor while you're cooking dinner, for example, in the kitchen, sure. if you have room for that, most people have a little spot, right? Yeah. Um, and so it's just this idea of 
changing your baby's position more often and as much as possible, offering them the chance to have that unrestricted movement. And it doesn't necessarily, yes, we want tummy time too, but it doesn't only have to be tummy time. Unrestricted movement could be, you know, they're laying on the floor on their back and they're like getting their legs and putting their feet into their mouth. And they're looking at all of the little toys that are dangling on the, on the baby gym thing. Um, That's really great movement too, because all of those are important. Yes, we want our babies to have tummy time because they are spending a lot of time on their backs. And so we really do need to strengthen the back part, right? All of the neck muscles and the back muscles, we need that to be strong so that we can have a strong core because the core is really the front and the back. And if we don't have a strong core, then we're not going to be strong in that upright sitting position pulling to stand, walking, sitting at a table and a desk at school, like all of right. those things are, are connected. Right. Um, so this is where tummy time comes into play. It didn't used to be a thing back in the 80s because babies were sleeping on their tummies. There weren't all these containers, right? But now because of the back to sleep campaign, this is a big problem. Yes, that helped with SIDS. It helped reduce SIDS. But then babies are spending all night on their backs and then we put them in the swing and then we put them in the car seat and that car seat comes out of the car and it clips into the stroller and then you can take that car seat out of the stroller and put it in your house because your baby is sleeping before you know your baby hasn't been out of that car seat for hours haven't used their own arms i can see you know and i'm such a big fan of all of this and i think i got somewhere i got like stampede by all of the the tiktoks and the reels about how time flies really fast. I saw one from a grandma who's like, oh, now being a grandma, it's my it's my actual turn to be a parent. So without the stress, mm-hmm. without the stuff, mm-hmm. I can actually be the parent I want to be, which really changed my mm-hmm. kind of look at how to be a parent. I wanted to do that the first time. So I try to be, I try to think of it like, how can I do it from the grandma point of view, right? Mm-hmm. To be really excited to see mm-hmm. your kid all the time, to be wanting to spend time yeah. with them. But I was also something that came across very early on was that um, making sure you're really engaged with the baby and mm-hmm. and spending time with them. And so on my end, I actually went so far into mm-hmm. that world. Is So I actually get a lot of comments, people asking me if I'm an OT because I do so many kids activities. Mm. I got into it super, super early. We do you one- should become one. <laughs> You know, I wanted to talk to you because the more you talk about it, that's because we do so many kids activity for mo- the big motor, gross, uh, mm-hmm. gross motor skills, fine motor skills. You do the pinchers, the grabs, mm-hmm. you're working on, you know, the, the problem solving skills, right? The matching, you're looking yeah. for all that. And um, doing those activities, I think, really helped escalate my my daughter's learning. Like she's mm-hmm. really advanced in, in speech and problem solving mm-hmm. and all mm-hmm. of that. But from my personal standpoint, if I can be very honest with you, I dove so deep into it. I always was making sure I'm holding my baby. I want to make sure Mm -hmm. I see eye contact at all times. That for the two and a half years, I didn't give myself a break. I'd go weeks without showering because I I felt bad to put her in the swing. We had Mm -hmm. it and then I was like, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't put her anywhere. I couldn't. And so she was always with me. I'm always working with her. And... I know it did benefit her and I know it benefited me because we have this Mm -hmm. strong, strong bond. But I also know I don't even know how to interact with other adults. (laughs) Right? Yeah. I went to a dentist's office and I was like, are you guys not playing with kid toys? Is there an activity you want me to set up in here? They're like, we're just going to clean your teeth, ma'am. Right? Like, and so it's, it's just, it's hard. And I do fall mm-hmm. into that comparison mm-hmm. place. Mm-hmm. I was, I'm reading a book right now about emotions and feelings yeah. and how comparison is so connected with mm-hmm. anxiety, stress, and worry, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and how that, because if, even if we're not talking in a, in a bad way, but if, if we're feeling that way, our kids can read it, they can sense mm-hmm. it, they can see it, mm-hmm. right? This is comes back to the co-regulation piece, right? And so they you have to be regulated yourself. Right. Right. <laughs> um, right. And this is hard when you're tired, when your baby is crying a lot, like, you know, all of that stuff. But we can chat about that in just a sec. I want to come back, though, to this idea where you felt like you needed to really 
like almost entertain your baby 24 hours a day and make all these extra activities because I want parents to really understand that this is also another place where we can put some of this increased worry and overwhelm and stress on ourselves because actually you don't need to entertain your baby 24 hours a day. I see a lot of parents are worried about like, oh, but you know, they're getting bored of this book that I'm reading and then I have to set this activity up. And like, by the end of the day, I'm so exhausted. I haven't gotten anything done. And I'm here to tell you that you actually do not have to teach your baby all of those things. Your job as a parent is to give your baby the opportunities to explore and yeah. to be in various sort of quote unquote learning opportunities. And that could mean your baby is in tummy time or laying next to you while you're folding laundry on the floor. Right. And you're right. chatting right. with your baby and you're like, oh, look at this cute little shirt. Mommy's going to fold yeah. the shirt. The shirt is blue. Whatever you're saying, you're singing a song. Yeah. Who knows what you're doing? They are getting so much development from that interaction and you don't have to set up an activity necessarily unless you want to and it sounds like that did bring you joy to a certain extent (laughs) and then it kind of took over (laughs) right I think I think as anything right it's there's one side and the other and there's extremes to both Mm -hmm. and I, I know I led myself you know I think a part of it through motherhood lens I also didn't know who I was as a person, mm-hmm. right? I really, through COVID, through motherhood, I, I didn't, and we moved. So I didn't have any contact with people, essentially. I wasn't sure who I was anymore. I wasn't the, like, I came from LA, so I was like, party, clubs, whatever, right? And I'm then, <laughs> You're like, I can't do that. <laughs> right, my club over here is like, oh, McDonald's had a farm, and I'm like, E-I-E-I-O, right? And so... But uh, I was one of the first in my like friend group to have a kid. And so my friends weren't in that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. They weren't within that schedule. And it's hard to share things because they wouldn't, it would just, you know, even when my parents would share things with me, I just wouldn't really connect, right? It's Mm -hmm. like, oh, you stay up late. Like I'm, yeah, I also stayed up late. I don't know. (laughs) You were throwing up through pregnancy. I was also throwing up. I had too many drinks. So it's like... (laughs) Right. It's like not at all related. Like I just I wouldn't connect. And so I felt really separated. But I think that kids activities, I think they helped me Mm -hmm. gain um, kind of purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. I wanted to be with my baby, but I wanted to do something because I have ADHD. And so Mm -hmm. I needed to be a little bit more productive. But all that said, I will rewind back because I know I took it to not to an extreme, but I became, I let it become my personality. Mm -hmm. Granted that led me, now I have a kid's show. And so I help kids with these activities and learning speech through all the different things. So it really did push me there. But I, because I've had parents who've commented on my stuff and they're like, hey, I can't do all that stuff. I'm Uh -uh. like, that is not what I'm trying to Mm -hmm. show. (laughs) And I don't want to be that person. This is what worked for me. I know that if, I know I live a very different lifestyle. Like I just, I want to do that. Just, and my Mm -hmm. daughter loves doing them now too. But now she's two and a half. And I'm going to tell you what, our favorite thing to do are these pretend plays. We play Mm. the emotions game right now. So it's Mm -hmm. like, mommy, are you feeling shy? Okay, take deep breath. Are you feeling (laughs) nervous? Let's take deep breath. She tells me, do an affirmation, mommy. Oh my gosh, so cute. (laughs) She's the sweetest, sweetest. And, but we go under my blanket. This is our little shy. And we go, mommy, are you crying? I'm going to hold you. Okay. You take some deep breaths. Mm -hmm. You say, I am brave. And we do this for four hours at a time. There's no toys around us. There's nothing Mm -hmm. going on, but we're having these discussions and conversations where I finally understood, I love doing the activities and I'm gonna keep doing, and now she sets them up. She says, mommy, you Mm -hmm. wanna learn? Here's the activity. You take Mm -hmm. the cup, you pour it in. Then, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, But right, as much as she loves doing them and I love doing them, our best moments is Mm -hmm. when I'm doing laundry and she says mommy can I help you do Mm -hmm. you want me to get the pink shirt or the blue shirt Mm -hmm. mommy hey where can I put this Mm -hmm. and then if I give her the the self of responsibility if I ask Mm -hmm. her to help me hey can you help me do this Mm -hmm. can you do this oh the courage she Mm -hmm. feels she says mommy I can do this I can help you I can teach you and it's no toys no activities it's these everyday things of like because she sees us doing it, right? And then she's put into this place of, 
I can do this. And so it's yep. these pretend plays of no toys, nothing's mm-hmm. going on. It's just us connecting. And she'll do that all day if I don't stop it. Mm-hmm. We've been stuck at a dentist play. And so we're playing dentist. She wants to do all the tools. And I'm like, I'm tired because we've been doing this for hours. So I'm like, let's go get a cookie. Let's go get yeah. a cookie downstairs for breakfast. Because <laughs> we woke up at seven. She's like, yeah. let's play dentist. It's now nine. And I'm like, and this is full week's worth of dentist play. And so I'm like, let's just go like let's switch it up um she's mommy no i don't want to cook you're playing dentist right now and i'm like (laughs) ah you determined sweet girl and so i struggle with this like man she does love activities and this pretend play now Mm -hmm. but i know you know i struggle with this because like i know the benefits of it and i know that we did it but i i have to be i also see that like in a sense I didn't need to do all of that, Mm-mm. right? No. Just hanging out with her. She, all she wants to do is hang out with me. She doesn't care if I have set up an activity. Exactly. Like, our babies, hang. our babies are humans. Our babies and children are just humans, right? She just wants to hang. They're just yeah. people just like you and you and I. You're not setting up activities for your for your partner. <laughs> well, I should. Right? Sometimes I'm just <laughs> like, do. man, here. Maybe you do. But like, all we want is to just hang out with you. And actually, yeah. the first many months of life, baby's favorite toy, quote unquote, is you. Right, right. <laughs> I love care that. About the shiny, you know, right. squishy thing that makes a noise or that, you know, pop up thing where you push a button and something happens. They just care about you. This yeah. is why often you'll find that your babies are like not interested in their toys and they much rather have that water bottle that you drink out of every single day um, right. or like the rolled up socks or whatever. Right. Right. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. I think and so she, and this is just an example, but she just wants to hang with me. And we, even when it came to toys, she didn't care for the toys, but I think we liked the activities because we were mm-hmm. always doing together. them together. Mm-hmm. So I do it, she does it, yeah. we take it, you know, and it's just, we were having fun. Um, and I think that helped grow, like our bond is just mm-hmm. so strong and the language skills, um, which I think helps a lot with the, the tantrum, because mm-hmm. the, she's able to communicate herself to me at all times. Yeah. And so I, I do want to promote the activities because I think they are so helpful. Yeah. But I wouldn't want any mom or dad to to think they have to do the amount of activities we do right. or to feel like they have to do them at all. Because I we got so many toys in my house from all this stuff, and I, they're all in bins right now because I just use them for work. But my daughter, all she wants to do is play pretend with a piece of paper. Now this is a, mm-hmm. a bumblebee. Now this is the zookeeper. Let's go mm-hmm. over here. And we're just playing with these everyday Things. Yeah, and I think it's important to mention also that it doesn't have to be hours and hours and hours of play. It could really be like 10 to 15 minutes of solid, like I am interested in whatever you are interested in. Mommy is here. You have my full attention. I'm not checking my phone. I'm not worried about dinner. I'm not doing whatever it is that I'm, you know, could be doing. Um, and you just give that undivided attention for even just a short period of like 10 to 15 minutes and their love cup fills up right? and then, and then they're happy and they can go and play on their own. And that's actually something too, that maybe not so much for babies because they still need you for a lot of things. But once they get into that toddlerhood, it's okay for them to be bored. Yeah, That's usually where the the most creativity comes from is, is after they're like, I don't know what else to do. This is boring. Come play with me. You're not, you can't play with me right now because you're working or whatever. Okay. What do I do? And then eventually like 10 minutes later, you're like, where are they? And they're off playing some little game that they have just now devised. Yeah. Right. And so I think that's an important piece to remember is that we don't have to be like the 24 hour entertainer. We don't have to have hours of time to play with our children because that's not realistic, right? That's not realistic, especially if you're going back to work. But also, even if you're staying at home, you don't have the mental, emotional energy to be on with your child for so many hours a day. So like, even go for a walk, go to the park. That is such huge development, just being out in nature, climbing on the, you know, the the park structures, swinging on the swing, going down the slide. So much amazing development is happening through those sort of daily activities. Have them help you 
in the kitchen if once they're old enough they can do mixing as of like you know 14 oh, yeah. 15 16 17 months um and they want to be there right I think or, kitchen is a great one because it's like sensory play right mm-hmm. and you're feeling part of the family you're getting the actual practical life skill you're in there yeah. um yeah and we we got my daughter included in the kitchen early but she can stand in that stool mm-hmm. that's the hours. learning she tower Right. She just wants to like eat blueberries while she's watching me do, you know. Hey, um, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> but, right, well, but that's something I'll be honest with you, because some somewhere we because I stayed home so much, mm-hmm. I created a really nice, effortless, smooth kind of rhythm for me where I really did put myself on the back burner. I love mm-hmm. every minute of it and I still do. But if I'm being right a little bit more analytical a little bit more critical of my situation I am that person because I do spend 24 7 with my kid Mm -hmm. and I'm always with her Mm -hmm. and it's hard it's hard for Mm -hmm. me to it's to pull away um it just to not be with her and so essentially I am that entertainer I like it it's part Mm -hmm. of my personality Mm -hmm. because I am that little kid Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. and I think my ADHD is so toddler right it's like let's do this let's do that um and so we're like, let's paint, let's do bubbles. But like, in a way, I'm not necessarily an adult. I'm like, a, I'm a kid having fun. I'm a playmate with my kid. Mm-hmm. And I think, although it may work in my situation mm-hmm. for my circumstances and where we're at, unless it's helpful in my work, I wouldn't, I don't think, I wouldn't want somebody to think that they have to do it or mm-hmm. need to do it. Mm-hmm. And I think... I know mentally when it's nighttime, I'm like, I just need to lay down and not Mm -hmm. answer a question Mm -hmm. for just 30 seconds, for just just need. (laughs) That's when you hide in the bathroom. (laughs) Right, right, right. And so, but, and it's, you know, with more talking, you know, she's two and a half now and uh, because I, I went to the dentist yesterday and I was in there for three hours. I was like, this is, the longest I've ever been for my daughter ever, ever. Wow. Um, and I, I cried, mm-hmm. but I've never been away from her for, I've never, I, longest is like an hour and a half when I have to work. And so my husband takes her out of the house because she just wants to be with me. And I was like, I've never been away from my kid. I don't mm-hmm. know what I, I uh, I'm just in a different place. And so, I think this is a, I think this is a theme though with a lot of a lot of parents is that they do have this sense of like okay now I've been with my child and I've been the primary caregiver for my child for all these many months however many right sure yeah um and then they they get to this point where they're like well I I couldn't go away like who who would watch my child or like I can't go get a massage like I can't leave my right, child for that right. long um but actually for both of you it would be beneficial to also spend time apart (laughs) Um, for just like that emotional development that attachment attaching to other people right Right. um and so and this is something to practice right and maybe you're doing like 30 minutes at a time and then it gradually gets to an hour and then you're taking a whole afternoon that she's like hanging out with dad you just said afternoon i was like Yeah, but you, but, oh my gosh, you, you yeah. know what? I can I I'm just I'm blown away because my whole thing is that with our kids we need to provide them practice, right? Because that's the only way we get better. Practicing going to the restaurant, practicing mm-hmm. going to the dentist, practice mm-hmm. putting dishes away, because that's the only way we learn to do better. And another concept is like in my head of how I'm still learning, still too, to give mm-hmm. myself grace for learning, and I'm like, and I can also be practicing Mm -hmm. i need to give myself grace and be respectful as i am with my toddler to give her respect of practice learning give her Mm -hmm. the opportunity to give her this thing but i don't give myself Mm -hmm. that so this comes down to self-care for moms too right and for none for take exactly because you're you're with your toddler 24 hours a day and you go to the dentist for self-care um, no no but in all, in all seriousness check me out drilling just, <laughs> right vacation but, 
on the airplane, oh, they tell you, right. put your own oxygen mask on first and right. then help others. Because right. if, heaven forbid, you have no more oxygen and you cannot breathe, then you can't help anybody, anybody anyway, right? right? And so this comes down to, it looks like you're you're doing great with the 24 hours a day, hanging out with your toddler, being the primary caregiver, like doing all of the things. But a lot of the tired. time, what happens is that we get exhausted, we get resentful, we get just burnt out. And then we're not parenting the way that we actually want to parent because we're either touched out, we're burnt out, we're just like so frazzled that we can't think. Right. We don't feel like ourselves, right? And so this is where that self-care piece is. It doesn't have to be a massage, it doesn't have to be like a spa day. It could literally be that you are taking 30 minutes to go to a coffee shop and just right. sit there and drink your coffee without having a baby attached to you or a toddler next to you. Right. The pick, the pick, the, the, what are you, the, right, right, right. Um, I think that's so important. And you know, if I was telling my best friend, anybody I know, if I was telling helpful, if I was telling my daughter right now, right, if she's grown up with kids, I'd be like, girl, let me do this. Go, mm -hmm. go through the racks at TJ Maxx. Exactly. Go look around, go, mm -hmm. go. You don't have to spend money. Go, mm -hmm. just make yourself a real nice bath, right? Like mm -hmm. I make such a cute bath for my kid, but I can't even make one for me because I have gotten to that place where I'm like, mm -hmm. I've gone out of practice. Mm -hmm. I've gone out of practice. Of and now it's time life. to start practicing. And practicing me, me time me to start <laughs> practicing i mean my mind right now is like whoa because i i've spoken about this on my podcast before for other listeners but i think a lot of my the people pleasing and putting myself mm -hmm. on back burner is uh, a higher history right of my childhood and all of that and how i'm really working hard to overcome my people pleasing and all of that but i really do see it come through when it comes to my daughter, right? Mm -hmm. Where I'm like, anything you need, I will run and I will get it to you and I'll put it in a pretty wrapper and I will give you the, the room and the space to learn and, you know, and I'll be over here quiet because you're mm -hmm. learning and I'll do this for seven hours because I know you're learning and it's a good opportunity. And even if my head, I'm like, oh man, I really wish if I just didn't have to answer But I'm like, this is for her. This is important. Mm -hmm. But in that conversation in my head, nowhere once does it say, hey, what about you? What about do you matter to yourself? Mm -hmm. And I know I should set a good example for my daughter because she sees it. Mm -hmm. So she needs to also see that I take time for myself because it's important 100%. And I just don't. And I need mm -hmm. to start practicing. Mm -hmm. Just like tummy time, right? They exactly. Like it. <laughs> it only they gets like easier it. as they practice and get stronger. You need to <sighs> exercise that self-care muscle. <laughs> I like how we started talking about baby development and baby practicing. And it really quickly turned into mommy practicing. Well, and I think what this underlying theme is, is that we do put a lot of pressure on ourselves, a lot of pressure on our motherhood journey. We do that through unrealistic expectations of what actually babies should be doing or how they should be sleeping or how they should be yeah. napping or how long they should be napping or, you know, when they should be sleeping through the night and all of those things. And so we put these unrealistic expectations. And then when we don't meet those unrealistic expectations or our babies don't meet those unrealistic expectations, we really feel like we have somehow failed as a mother, but also right. as a person yeah, and that we right. are not good enough, right? right? There's all this stuff. And then that is that feeling of like the stress, the overwhelm, the like anxiety or, you know, all of those things. And right. so, and then we try to do more and then we get even more exhausted and more burnt out, right? Because it's just this constant trying to achieve more and be better. But what yeah. if, what if whatever you were doing right now is good enough? What if that is just exactly the right thing? You know, what's so silly, right? When you said like good enough, right? When I usually hear, oh, something's good enough. It has like a negative connotation mm. to it almost it's like oh did you yeah it's good enough like oh mm -hmm. it's good enough like i probably could do better but like there's some sort of negativity to it and i don't think it should be that way because the way you said it some things are good enough not in a bad way but because you don't need to do more you're okay you, mm -hmm. you are doing the most in that moment and it's probably exactly what mm -hmm. you or the child may need 
And it's so hard with those expectations, especially if you're a new parent, because mm -hmm. you don't know what you're doing and you feel like you have to back up your actions with these some sort of like the testing, the milestones to say, mm -hmm. okay, at least I'm doing something right. Because we don't know mm -hmm. if we're doing anything right at all. And so if we have some of these little check marks that we can kind mm -hmm. of hold on to, then we're like, okay, maybe we're doing it right. But then you look and it's like, oh, well, the... One of the ones that gets me kind of triggered is mm -hmm. the, the, and I know they're not supposed to, and I know I'm probably wrong, but the ones are like, okay, if your baby's eight months, they should be awake at 8 a.m., sleeping from 9 to 11, have a little snack, then they're back in bed, 1 to 3, from 4.15 to 5.17 on the dot. If mm -hmm. they are not, and you're just like, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And this is this is the stress, right? Because then you're you're trying to put your baby and your life into this little nice little package. Wouldn't it be nice if all eight month old babies could follow that exact same schedule? But how about you and I? We have very different sleep schedules, right. wake up times, bedtimes. Yeah. You know, I love to nap when time allows. Like those kinds of things, right? And like, yeah, as adults, as fully functioning adults, very productive members of society, we all have different sleep needs and yeah. different sleep quote unquote schedules. Right, so right. why are we expecting our babies who don't actually even have their full brain formed yet? Right. Why are we expecting them to all be the same? Yeah. And that's where that stress comes from. And the other thing that I find stressful for parents is this idea that their baby should be having these super long naps in the crib. <laughs> my, oh my gosh, thank you for saying, my, my baby didn't do long naps. I think the longest we've ever taken was two hours and me and my husband were, we're co That's a long so nap. With my baby. Right. And one time it happened, right? Cause I keep seeing three hour, this hour and I'm like, okay. Um, and then one time my baby, well, not baby. She's like two now. This mm -hmm. is the first, it, it happened too. Always so we're texting, we're like, right. Oh. My five so and almost eight year old, I still call them my babies sometimes. <laughs> Well, because my, my daughter's favorite thing right now to say, she's like, I'm a baby, but I'm a kid, but I'm yeah. still a baby. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, you are. Oh. Yeah. Um, but gosh, I do not. I, I just never came across a three hour. Uh, one of my friends did this like TikTok. She's like, when your baby finally starts sleeping two hour, three hour naps and you don't know what to do with yourself. And I was mm -hmm. like, how'd you do that? Like, when did Because yeah. it, it's the way it was phrased. I was like. Am I going to get to that? It, mm -hmm. When am I supposed to? Did I do, right? And I know we're not supposed to compare, but I you know. see it and you see mm -hmm. it. And, 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 and you're, you're like, like, I want that. But actually, it's not really a realistic expectation. And most babies don't nap for that long. Yes, of course, there's the unicorn babies who are so easygoing and they do this and that and they sure, sleep wherever sure. you put them and it's like totally easy and great. And they've been sleeping in their crib like, for four or five hour stretches since the moment they were born. Yeah. But for the majority of us, that is not the case. That's um, so good to and hear. there's so many factors involved in sleep. Like, I mean, this is this is the the part where so my my sleep certifications, I've got two of them. They're both in one of them is more attachment focused and one of them is more like neuroscience focused. Mm, okay, um, and neither of them are sleep training. Okay. Because the sleep training industry actually is also part of our stress <laughs> because they want you to think that your baby should be having these, you know, one or two hour naps in the crib and they should be waking up at seven or at eight and going to sleep at seven or at eight, or they, you know, they should be sleeping through the night. They should be sleeping 11 to 12 hours consistently. All of these things that you hear, okay. um, you know, even things like, oh, naps are not restorative unless they're on a, on a non-moving surface. And you're like, oh my gosh, so many they want you to think that there's a problem with your baby's sleep so that you will pay them to right. fix it. It's but like what the, the... if there was no problem to begin with? What if we just, yeah. What if we just watched our baby, watched their mood, enjoyed our baby, instead of obsessing about sleep? If your baby has a twenty-minute nap and they wake up and they're happy, that's all they needed. 
Right. Now, if they're they're crying and they're tired and you're like, and they're cranky and fussing and of course, maybe they're still tired and we can kind of play around with how do we get them to sleep longer? And here's the thing, like I, my, my first, my son was not a good sleeper (laughs) at the time. That's what I thought. Right. I was so stressed out with his sleep. He would have like 20, 30 minute naps, never wanted to nap in his bassinet, like literally would wake up the moment I put him down. Um, he could nap in the in the in the stroller as long as it was moving. As soon as I went into a store or stopped, it was like bing. Yeah. Um, but he could sleep for three hours when he was on or next to me. Mm-hmm. And actually, that's very normal, especially in that fourth trimester, those first like three, four months. Yeah. Your baby needs you to regulate. Their brain is mm-hmm. only about 25 to 29 percent like formed. Um, yeah. I'm, and so I'm, it's like bringing this stuff into more awareness where you're like, oh, okay, like that makes sense. Like I'm, that's where I'm at too. My baby also doesn't like to sleep on their own. My baby also only wants to be held like 24 hours a day and is happiest next to me. Or here's the, here's the other thing that frustrates me is where the sleep training industry is like, if you pick your baby up and they stop crying, then that means that they have manipulated you into picking you. And and you're just like, what? I I get so, because similarly, uh, also short naps. Anytime Mm -hmm. I put her down, it was awake. So I would just sit there holding her. Mm -hmm. I wish I found the baby wearing things earlier because I just held her in my arms and my Mm -hmm. arms were tired, but I just held her. Baby wearing is such an amazing lifesaver for most babies. It takes time to practice. I will say that (laughs) the first few weeks of trying to figure out how to get my baby in there and situated and they're screaming. (laughs) Right, right. And you know what else I just read recently was um, a study that put out, um, I want to say around seven months, babies up to seven months still think that they're part of the mom. And so they just want to be. It's probably even later than that. Longer, right? And, but it makes sense if they want to be close mm-hmm. because all they know is your heartbeat, your smell, mm-hmm. everything around them looks foreign until about mm-hmm. five, six months. They don't even see anything away mm-hmm. from you. So it's like essentially you were invited to this party, right? You don't mm-hmm. know anybody. All you know is your mom. So you're just trying to be close because you're like, mom, I don't know what's going on over here. I don't know why this is making sounds. I don't know why this person's walking. Mm-hmm. Can I tell you something? Yesterday, I was at the dentist office and I just kind of got into my seat and I'm a grown adult. I know what happens at the dentist office, but something about it. And they are a great, great dentist office. This isn't. Can I just interject? You know what happens at the dentist office because you have had the experience. Right. right, If this was your very first time, AKA our baby's like first few years of life (laughs) is all about new experiences. It would be scary. So this is a two part. So for my kids show, I just did an episode about going to the dentist because when we took Mm -hmm. my daughter, it was, of course, scary. Right. People in there, strangers, Mm -hmm. right. Violating, holding you down. Mm -hmm. New place. The whole Mm -hmm. thing is just like scary. So I did a whole episode about you go in, you have to wait. They'll put this blanket on you. You do have to lay down because we can see you opening wide. Then we do some activities to really see the teeth. Right. Mm -hmm. And it really helped my daughter because she's like, I understand the purpose of it, right? Mm Because when you don't know, it's hard. So knowing all of that, I go into the dentist yesterday. And because they have their dental lingo, Mm -hmm. they're kind of chit-chatting because they got to do, I had to have like a a bridge put in. So it was four hours, long, right? But they're just discussing things. And I'm there, but I'm not part of the conversation. Everybody knows I'm there, but I'm excluded. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows what's going on. And Mm -hmm. I kind of want to know because it's right happening to me. But I also know I don't really need to know because they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But I feel really excluded and not part of it and almost ignored. And I know I wasn't. This isn't Mm -hmm. anything. But I'm kind of. That was your experience. A few things. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I thought. This is how toddlers feel when Mm -hmm. we're just having conversations. Mm -hmm. We go to the store, even going to the restaurant, like, right, person brings a plate, takes it away. You're Mm -hmm. just like, I'm usually in control of my plate, right? And so these things are occurring. Mm -hmm. And I try to do my best, you know, always get down with my daughter. I tell her, hey, this is about to happen. This is it. We go through every little step. Narrating your day helps with babies also. 
Right. Like, okay, right. you know what? Your your diaper is dirty. You have poo in your diaper. Now we're going to take the diaper off. I'm going to wipe your bum. You know, like all of those things. On. Like, So they know what's yeah. going on. They can label it. They can, they mm -hmm. can name it. It's hard when and you not don't only have a that, for but something. Exactly. But guess how much development is happening during that narration? Big fan. <laughs> so much. Big Language fan. development. You've got that, that attachment piece. You're connecting right. with your baby. They are also feeling seen and yeah. they are also feeling that calmness of like, okay, right. like I kind of know what's, well, not that they necessarily know what's happening, but like they're a little more calm because you're guiding them through it. Right. So much development. You don't have to have any toys. You could just do that all day long, narrate your day, go about your day doing your daily routines and your baby would develop just fine. Yeah. And they would, my daughter loves it when I tell her something. I spilled a coffee one time and I said, she said, what happened? I said, PZ, I was walking, walking, I opened the door and knocked the coffee down. And then she wanted that story over because she understood <laughs> and could yeah. see it, right? There's this understanding. Mm -hmm. And there was something about, right, the dentists were just chit-chatting, doing their own thing. But when they needed to talk to me, they would kind of get my attention. And then I would feel like I was pulled into this world. But besides that, I was really excluded. Mm -hmm. And this is a little side note, but mm -hmm. so something we play with my daughter is just like the peekaboo, but I see you, don't see you, mm -hmm. right? When she closes her eyes, when I close my eyes, she says, Mommy, I don't see you. When I'm right mm -hmm. in front of her, she says, Mommy, I don't see you. And she has very good speech. She knows, mm -hmm. and I've tried this multiple times. And I open my eyes, she says, Mommy, I see you. Mm -hmm. When I close my eyes, she doesn't see me. And there's something about the eye contact. And you can see it with babies and toddlers. Mm -hmm. And even as an adult, I felt it. Mm -hmm. When people are moving around me, I felt like I didn't matter or exist as an adult. As a very well, right? Mm -hmm. But if they It's almost like she doesn't them, see your soul, right? Through the eyes or something. So and interesting. Goes, Mommy, I don't see you. Mm -hmm. and she's very honest about it. And if I hide him, she says, Mommy, it's only when she can see into my eyes and make yeah. eye contact, she sees me as a person. And I would bet you anything, when I look at her, mm -hmm. she feels seen, she feels understood, mm -hmm. she feels like hey, she can get her things across. But that shook me when she told me, because I was like, what do you mean yeah. you don't see me? I'm right here. My, and then yeah. I, I, I checked over and over. She says, Mommy, when you close your eyes, I do not see you. So babies and children, young children, are very energetically open. And so I wonder if that also is part of what's going on is that energy piece of seeing into your soul through your eyes, like, because, because the eyes do have like a brightness to them or a dullness to them or a glazed overlook or, right. you know, like, and so I do, that's so interesting. That's so cool. It's so, in, it's something that like blew me away and I want to mm -hmm. do, the only thing I can do is interact with her and ask her more mm -hmm. questions. And I'm so thankful she's, she can tell me about these things because she can really articulate herself well when it comes to these things. But that really did surprise me. And so I've been doing kind of my own test to kind of see, but mm -hmm. it's even when my partner, my husband, if he's just kind of talking to me, I might miss it. I might kind of think, but when he's right here and actually I can see his mood, his intention, right? His energy. I can mm -hmm. see really everything. But if I'm not making that eye contact, it essentially could be a text, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a person moving mm -hmm. around. And that happens so often, especially in public places. People are just kind of moving around and all going on about their business. They, when I think even at a restaurant, I don't see even people unless I'm looking at them. And But besides that, they're like, right? Right? Like, mm -hmm. And for, for babies and toddlers and kids, I think they do see that, right, the energy, the light, kind of like if someone's, mm -hmm. especially in early ages, if it's a chaotic childhood, mm -hmm. a kid will learn how to act and what sounds to listen for without the, the adult saying anything, right? Mm -hmm. They'll know mm -hmm. how you're feeling to avoid yep. a conflict to try to, and that yeah. is, I think, through sounds, noises, mm -hmm. words. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? A baby and a toddler could read mm -hmm. that if no words were said, right? If you mm -hmm. look at them, that's why they say the mom eye contact when you give it, they know because mm -hmm. so much more is in there. I think we yeah. can tell our kids, I love you of that through our eyes. Yeah. And and it's it's actually the right orbitofrontal cortex probably is what's, what's involved. And I want to just also mention that it doesn't necessarily have to do with your actual eyesight. It has to do with that. Intention, intention also 
intention. Yeah. Yes. Um, and and so really when we have that connection, um, so Kim Barthel is a like an amazing OT who does a lot on attachment and bonding and trauma and all of this stuff. And she has coined, or I guess coined the term, but like this idea of gleaming and ble- gleaming and beaming. Mm, and so okay. it's this eye contact but it's the intention so you don't actually have to have the vision it's the intention of gazing into a loved one's eyes but especially baby's eyes and that just happens to be like you know if you're breastfeeding or holding your baby in your arms that's like the distance right that is kind of needed but it's this idea that by really connecting in that way it actually um triggers the oxytocin Mm. Mm-hmm. I can I see and that. that's like I, the love yeah. hormone for anybody who hasn't figured that out that oxytocin right, right. is such an important part of motherhood and parenthood and all of that that love it's that love and that connection right. and that yeah you know it often makes me think of um like when I come home and my dog just kind of like runs over to me because she's so excited to see me mm-hmm. and that welcoming just feels so nice yeah. you feel missed you feel love and mm-hmm. I try to do that with my daughter too like yeah. anytime I'm like hi Okay. that excitement and I think even without the big expression or the big mm-hmm. I think they can they can see that mm-hmm. we can see that if someone's mm-hmm. excited to see that we can see if somebody's pretending to be excited mm-hmm. to see us mm-hmm. we can see and I think this is where the 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 phone thing comes in if you're on your phone mm-hmm. they can't see your eye contact because now my daughter says I was doing work I was answering an email and I try to stay away from my phone at all times because I'm like I just don't need to it, it gives me anxiety because then I think I need to get to something right. And then mm-hmm. it pulls me away because then I'm like, mm-hmm. I didn't get to this. It stresses me out. So now I just keep it away. But sometimes I will open it up for work. And my daughter said, mommy, can you put your phone away, please? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pay attention to me. I'm right here. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. And she's right. Mm-hmm. I should. And I'm like, with me, I'm like, I give her 24 seven, but I'm like, right now there's an important developmental set that's happening. We're in mm-hmm. the middle of this play mm-hmm. and essentially I'm ignoring you right mm-hmm. in front of your face. Mm-hmm. That's su- We don't like that as adults. Mm-hmm. And so even more so now I keep it away, but that eye contact, when she told mm-hmm. me, she's like, I do not see you. I don't see, you. and she has great big imagination. She can imagine things and she this is chicken, this is bunny. She tells them all these stories and I'll say, this is farmer. Like, I'll just make things out of my hand. She's like, oh yeah, that's the kitten. Like she, she, you know, and she's very specific. She's mommy, when Mm -hmm. you close your eyes, I cannot Mm -hmm. see you. Mm -hmm. So neat. Yeah, that's worth exploring more. I'd love to learn more about it. Mm -hmm. I want to now get like a whole bunch of babies in a room together. (laughs) Do some experiments and research. Right. (laughs) Some things I get, you know, you'll see those studies done um like where they have like wires to the baby or they experiment mm-hmm. if the mommy's smiling the baby or not mm-hmm. and, and I'm like oh my gosh don't torture the baby yeah. Just smile. you know you don't want to see it but I do want to know <laughs> there's just so yeah. much that is unknown and I I'm a big fan of this idea of um kind of the the expectations and the respect mm-hmm. that we have towards kids I think sometimes we treat them as kids maybe, but expect them to act like adults when mm-hmm. it comes to like, well, you should have known not to do that. You mm-hmm. should have. But it's like they, if you didn't tell them mm-hmm. how to do something, there's no way of them knowing. Yeah. Um, an idea I'm kind of writing about right now is this, uh, the calm down. Mm-hmm. You can't tell anyone to calm no. down unless we've taught them how to do so or showed yeah. them or modeled it. But also you're having emotions for a reason. Right. And right. so do you actually, should you be repressing and suppressing those emotions or actually moving through the emotion, allowing that emotion to happen right. and that journey through the emotion so that we can get to the other side and have that big side of like, oh, okay, now right. I feel better. Right. Now I'm calm. Right. This is where I'm at right now. And I, I mentioned I'm reading this emotions book and it's about Relating um, emotions to cartography, right? And how the only way we can get somewhere in a big retrospect is a map, right? Some sort of landmark, mm-hmm. some sort of you have to know what the places are, how to get there. Similarly, our emotions, if we don't label them correctly, if we don't know what they are, if we make them into a mountain versus a valley, right? Because mm-hmm. our brain analyzes them and puts them in a category. We file it away and then we attach 
an action to it, right? If you don't like a person, you're not going to go over to that family gathering, then you're moving, mm-hmm. across, right? Whatever might happen. But we then create our own map of emotions. And mm-hmm. we, if we're not taught how to, what each emotion is or how to process it or mm-hmm. what to go through, which I think a lot of my generation and you have the older generation, I don't think emotional intelligence and the teaching mm-hmm. of it was even a thing. It's mm-hmm. much like, stop crying. Don't, I remember one time I was crying. Mom was like, put my whole head in the tub. I was like, stop crying. And I was like, I oh know. my gosh, I cannot yeah. cry. Like, I cannot cry. I'm the yeah. worst human being. And I pile up my emotions inside my head. Mm-hmm. And I know it's unhealthy, but I'm trying to work with my daughter. I'm like, hey, I can see how that was really frustrating. Mm-hmm. I, it, that does suck. Oh, that is tough. Mm-hmm. But I think the process of it being able to label, name them, mm-hmm. Because then it often it's connected to our physicality too. It's like, mm-hmm. why do I feel like this inside? Being able to say, you're feeling angry right now. Mm-hmm. Let's get this anger out of your body. Let's go jump around. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Or can I give you a tight hug? What if we mm-hmm. pretend we're a turtle? Let's put something heavy on your back so you mm-hmm. feel that getting it right. But teaching those skills of how to actually name it and process it instead of the the calm mm-hmm. down, go quiet, yeah. go. Yeah. I don't have time for this. I don't know what this is, right? Um, And sometimes we say those things without conscious thought before we say them, right? Like, and I've I've noticed this with my own and like our family dynamics where it's like, whoa, I just said something and that I wasn't meaning to say that, but that's because I heard that when I was growing up and it just automatically comes out and you're like, wait a second, I didn't actually mean that. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right. Right? And so so this is also where becoming more conscious of that and more and then intentionally kind of shifting away from those, you know, automatic kind of things that might have been from when you were growing up. That's a huge piece also, I think, of of shifting our children's like, you know, kind of future and their development um, and their emotional Right. You know, resiliency and, and all of that, too, and emotional well-being, um, because this is a big piece. And this is this is also a, a big detriment in the sleep training culture, mm-hmm. right, where we're basically that culture is like, well, we should ignore our baby's cries. Oh, right. I can't. I just. And, and, and eventually, and eventually they stop crying. Why? It's not because they learn to fall asleep or self-soothe or whatever, because that's actually not developmentally possible yet. They do not have the brain capacity to self-soothe from a distressed state. They don't Mm -hmm. have the, that doesn't even start to come on board until like three or four years of age. So for babies, what they're learning is crying doesn't bring mom or dad or primary caregiver. So what's the point? I'm just not going to cry. I still have all of those needs. I still have the fear. I still have the sadness. I still have the anger. I still have the discomfort. Mm. I still have the hunger, whatever it is. But I've learned that crying is not going to get me what I need. You know what I saw some t- one time, and I, I, I won't back it up because I don't know the research, but it sounded reasonable to mm-hmm. me, so I will share it. Mm-hmm. But um, it was in the fact of when we leave our babies while they're trying to communicate and we ignore those needs, mm-hmm. we are essentially providing them with an opportunity to start exploring the narcissistic traits in a way mm-hmm. of because no one will help me. I will figure out a way of how to do this. And it starts very early mm. on because if we show it in such a, right, because if we look at the at the pyramid, security and safety is mm-hmm. the very first. Mm-hmm. And so if that need isn't met, we can't even jump to any of the other mm. wants, actualization, mm-hmm. any of the other things. We're just trying to provide our own safety. Mm-hmm. And the way they were discussing it was that can come out in the tantrums later on mm-hmm. because they've learned that, to get something, they have to do it on their own and they mm. have to to get something on our own. We usually mm-hmm. have to fight for it. We have mm-hmm. to raise our voice. We have to try to show up mm-hmm. because no one helped us and they're yeah. not going to help us again, which yeah. isn't accurate. And this is an exaggeration. I'm not just saying, you know, mm-hmm. you're raising a narcissist. This was something that I saw and I thought, you know, that thread does make sense to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's... It's interesting because the other piece 
kind of swinging another way is I find a lot of times parents also have this feeling like their child should never cry. And that to be truly attachment focused, their child should never cry. But crying in and of itself is not a bad thing because babies cry to get their needs met, right? That's their only way of kind of communication. Adults cry. But but for initially, when babies don't have the language, crying is kind of their only way of communicating like something is up, whether I am scared, whether I am sad, whether I'm uncomfortable, whether I'm too hot, whether I'm too cold, whether I'm hungry, whatever it is, whether I'm in pain, like whatever it is, crying is often the way that they kind of get their needs met. But as they start to get older, right, crying is also a way to express that emotion and get through that emotion. Yeah. And so that comes back to our, our talk of, you know, like the be quiet or calm down or like, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Actually, we, we want to support our children's emotions. We want yeah. to allow them to move through those emotions. So our job as parents is not actually to stop the crying. It's right. to support our children through that emotion of of course you're gonna like make sure their diapers change and make sure they're fed and like all of those basic needs but if because I do work with a lot of families who are like I know that they're they're full they're dry they're they're fine like why are they still crying it might be un- discomfort that that you haven't figured out yet but it Maybe also might be I am scared I just need the comfort I don't know why I'm crying maybe I'm reliving my birth right like who knows well, you know sometimes I and this is just like I'm I'm a stable person but you know like it hormones get in the way things mm-hmm. that you feel and you just cry and if somebody asks me why you're crying all I mm-hmm. want to say is like I don't know because mm-hmm. I'm overwhelmed I'm stressed I can't put my thoughts together I don't really know exactly what um spiked it what but like what you Sometimes. need, yeah, yeah and what you need in that moment is to hug, right? Right. It doesn't have to uh, say anything. Just a hug or sitting next to you with a hand on your knee. Oh I'm here gosh. for you. Um, you know, I said we like to play the shy cry game right now with my mm-hmm. daughter. We go under the blanket. So we go through different emotions. She'll tell me which emotions she wants me to do. She's like, Mommy, can you be nervous? Mommy, could you be surprised? The one we started three days ago, she says, Mommy, do you feel like crying? Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, okay, we're exploring that. And this was the sweetest thing. So we go under the blanket. She says, mommy, it's okay to cry here. You can cry here. And I said, oh my gosh, like, so, like, I've said this to her before. So she's getting, but I've never heard that. Mm -hmm. No one said that to me. I've only Mm -hmm. heard you can't cry. Don't do this. Mm -hmm. And so when she did say that, I did start crying because it was like, oh my gosh, it Mm -hmm. is okay. Like actually hearing it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa the weight of that so she, and she said mommy it's okay to cry here and then mm-hmm. she said mommy can I lay next to you or give mm-hmm. you a hug or what mm-hmm. would make you feel better mm-hmm. she says I have poppers do you want me to bring them to you and she brought these little poppers to <laughs> you are the sweetest kid mm-hmm. she offered me a hug she offered to just be there mm-hmm. and she's like maybe a little fun toy would just help you mm-hmm. but she wasn't stopping my crying because mm-hmm. I was just like okay I'm crying 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 like we just played these mm-hmm. pretend But she likes to go through them and practice them. And she went through the steps. She never wanted me to stop crying. Mm -hmm. She just wanted to help. And Mm -hmm. I was like, she's this beautiful human. We Mm -hmm. all are. Mm -hmm. And different circumstances put us in a different place. But I was always told, don't Mm -hmm. cry. Don't do this. You spilled. You suck. This and this. And it was my first time hearing Mm -hmm. somebody say to me, it's okay to cry here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay to cry. And and our job is not to stop the crying for our kids, but to support them with loving intention. You're there supporting them. And that and I think this is important because sometimes you have tried everything and yeah. you can't your baby is still crying. Yeah. And sometimes you feel those feelings of stress and overwhelm and worry and like, oh my gosh, why can't I help? But you are helping them. If you are holding them, supporting them hugging them, whatever feels right in your heart in that moment, that is the right thing to do. Just keep doing it. Yeah. And let your baby go through whatever they're experiencing. Making sure, obviously, that their basic needs are met and you've checked all of that. But (laughs) sometimes you do all of that and you're still like, oh my gosh, why are you crying? But maybe they just need to cry it out. Like it's, Mm -hmm. it's okay. And I think 
It's okay when you're supporting your baby. What is not okay is to leave our babies and children to cry on their own. Because they don't know how to deal with it Mm -hmm. yet. They don't know what's happening to their body. It's scary. I don't like crying Mm -hmm. on my own. You know, when I was in my 20s, things would happen. And you think Mm -hmm. even in high school, right, like the love of your life and all of this, and Mm -hmm. you're just on your own. And that feeling of loneliness, Mm -hmm. when you feel like you can't, even like you just don't have anyone, Mm -hmm. um, I think is really sad as an adult. I think it's really sad as a kid, especially for kids, right? They trust us. They trust the parent um, to be their safe space. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. And when then that, that person turns on them mm-hmm. um, or is shouting, you know, then it's like, well, shoot, you're shouting. I'm going to start shouting, too, because I think that's what we're supposed to do. I'm also tr- I'm just <laughs> yes. trying my best, too. You're trying your best. I'm trying my best also. Yeah. Um, it's, it's hard not to be able to communicate, especially at those younger ages. But I think it's foolish to ignore the communication that does happen. Mm-hmm. I don't yep. think that's fair because we all want to be heard. A hundred percent. Kylie, I love talking to you. I feel like we didn't get into all of the other <laughs> stuff. We so could be much- here all day. <laughs> right. And it, but, it, but that's the thing too. Like these conversations are so important. Even mm-hmm. just, I think the one of the biggest highlights for me was practicing today Mm -hmm. that I should still be practicing things Mm -hmm. right um and this is this is such an important piece because you're not expected to be a perfect mom and nobody cares Mm -hmm. can I be honest nobody Mm -hmm. cares yeah you don't have to do Pinterest nurseries and have all of the activities and the toys and all of the things really you're just doing your best and your best is good enough and your Ugh. best on one day might be different than your best on another day. And that's also okay because you're human. And right. so are your babies and your children. And right. we have and to remember are. that they're also doing their best. And they're right. not trying to manipulate you or they're not trying to, you know, be annoying on purpose or whatever. They're doing their best too. Yeah. And that's an important piece is like as humans, we're all just trying to do our best Nobody wants to, you know, be annoying. I don't think people or... <laughs> want to be annoying or create conflict. Yeah. I think we're just, yeah. And things are so frequently changing that we really mm-hmm. all are just trying to adapt yeah. as quickly as we can. 100%. And yeah. the faster moving world, we're all just really trying to. Yeah. And the kids are helping us slow down, right? Yeah. They're just like, I just want to sit with you mm-hmm. and pick this flower. Can I give mm-hmm. you this piece of grass? I think it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Do you like it? And you're just like, I love this piece of grass. And yeah. I want to ignore <laughs> all the thoughts, right? Because we create these lists, like we talked about at the very beginning, mm-hmm. right? The expectations we set for ourselves, the things mm-hmm. we want to get to. Um, man. Yeah. It's like this thing of, like, balance. Um but I think balance is unrealistic almost, mm-hmm. right? It's like sometimes there's going to be days where it's just full kid. Some days going to be, hey, we're just folding laundry on the floor mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be all day laundry. But mm-hmm. that's just how things turned out. And, and that's fine. Next, next week, we just didn't do laundry. Like, we just didn't get to it. And mm-hmm. we'll have double next week and we'll make it a fun yeah. party. Um, that also comes to expectations of what mom's feel like they need to do in any given day to quote unquote clean the house do the laundry do the cooking do all of the things they are this like big long to-do list but whose expectations are those nobody is probably caring besides you nobody so what if you added in Mm -hmm. and i think we yeah i was gonna say i think that we we discount what looking at that blade of grass is actually doing and that is actually just as important if not more important than folding the laundry or cleaning the bathroom gift it's this presence is this moment and the gifts i'm such a because the gifts are 
They can't give you anything. They can't go to the store. They, if they could, I promise you, your kid would buy you the world. They would mm -hmm. buy you everything you like. Mm -hmm. My daughter goes to the store, she says, Daddy, let's get mommy mushrooms. She mm -hmm. loves mushrooms. Let's get her some raspberries. She loves raspberries, mm -hmm. like, right? And so, but when she can give me a flower mm -hmm. or a stick she found, mm -hmm. she found this, like, Mommy, this is your brave stick. You can hold it and feel brave. And she's like, I got this for you. Mm -hmm. She did that, right? She won, mm -hmm. she, oh, all she had, she gave to me. Yeah. What yeah. an honor, like, yeah. oh my gosh. But I want, and I want moms to know that like, by keeping your child alive, <laughs> changing their diapers, making sure they're fed, you know, making sure that they're wearing clothes, like all of the things are, those are all, those should all be on your to-do list too and checking those off, right? Cause yeah. those all count. And I think we forget that sometimes where we're like, oh my gosh, I have done nothing today. Right. And you're like, actually, you had such a busy day <laughs> keeping your child alive. Right. I think just being present and being with your kid is enough. Mm -hmm. And there are, I, sometimes I'll see it's like day in the life of, right? And they put these cute clothes on and I just can't get the clothes on mine. <laughs> and she runs around in diaper most of the time. Totally fine. And I'm, I'm like, I, I've decided that that's a battle I'm willing to lose. The food one, I, I see in so much stress that like if my kid does eat a bowl of blueberries and maybe some french fries and today, tomorrow maybe something else, mm -hmm. but as long as she ate and she feels full, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. I don't need to follow this recipe that this thing that the builds and her kid loves it, but, but I'm like, I, mm -hmm. I will do a trade off mm -hmm. because I won't be able to do that or I'll feel like I didn't do it. But what I can do right now is this and it's playtime mm -hmm. and that's what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, you know, you see all this stuff like how when you're older, you're not gonna wish you you folded more laundry or mm -hmm. washed more dishes. You know, if it's, I'm not saying get paper plates, but if it makes mm -hmm. sense for your family to do it on yeah. a piece of paper, on a coffee filter, to have some mm -hmm. snacks so you can just throw it away after, mm -hmm. so you can breathe, mm -hmm. uh, to not have to worry about the dishes, to not have to worry about where it's all gonna get. Don't put clothes on them so they don't get mm -hmm. a messy. Let them do it in the bathtub, right? Mm -hmm you'll have a lot more fun with it yeah. without the extra worries that we add on ourselves. Cause then yeah. as soon as I put something on, I get dirt on it. I'm like, now I have to wash it. And this, this kind of comes back to the underlying theme of my book where it's like really trusting your instincts as a mom, as a parent, right. And tuning into those instincts. But what I tell the moms that I work with is if it's working for you and your baby, then keep doing it. Whether that is, you know, the activities that you're doing during the day or sleep or whatever, if it's working for you guys, uh, keep it. When it stops working for either you or your child, then it's time to change it because you matter also. So even if you're like, oh my gosh, like, let's just say this is a big one, nursing to sleep. Mm -hmm. If that is working for you and your baby, keep doing it. If at some point you're like, oh my gosh, this is so frustrating. I don't want you latched on all the time. Right, right. <laughs> I'm right. hating my life right now or whatever. Then yeah. it's it's okay. That's okay. You don't have to nurse to sleep then anymore. That's when it's time to change it. Or if your baby doesn't fall asleep nursing at the breast anymore, because that also happens, <laughs> then it's time to find a new way. Sure, sure. Right? And so this is an important piece of, of, taking understanding first of all what is biologically kind of typical or normal for babies sure. through different ages and stages so this is also something i teach like what is it actually what is a baby actually supposed to sleep like 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 it's normal yeah. that they wake up it's normal that they have the 20 to 30 minute naps like it's also normal that they sleep for three hours when on you right like those are yeah. all things that we need to be talking more about that reduces the stress but also in terms of development babies, this is why we have ranges of development, right? And babies, like you want to be watching your baby for progression and skills. I don't care right. if they sit at nine months or at seven months, right? right? I want to be seeing that each week you're like, oh, look at that new thing that my baby's doing. Right. That's right. what we want to be monitoring. And when they're adults, they're not going to be on their first date saying, when did you sit up as a baby? <laughs> Right? Like, I did it at seven months. How about you? Right. And then I, you know, this I is a, a you make it one. or break it. When did you potty train? And how long did you, how long did it take for you? Because this yeah. is important, right? Like, 
I think we are so in it and the comparison like we talked about that it yeah. becomes such a but if we were to zoom out what if you right? just stopped caring so much oh, it, what, I, yeah that's the that's the what journey. if you just were like huh I trust that my baby will develop my job is to provide them with the opportunities right I think and it comes. I'm just gonna kind of watch and wait and see and yeah, just be there for them. Be right? just be, just right. be. Watch your child instead just of trying to do all the time. Right, right. I think that's the biggest mm-hmm. one. I think, I mean, this can go on and on. We'll yeah. Wrap it up. Um, <laughs> but I think it somewhere internally, if you have that confidence and you can actually listen to your intuition, mm-hmm. right? From the mm-hmm. heart, from the brain, you can hear yourself instead of the experts, the the grandparents, mm-hmm. the other moms, the whatever, right? If you yeah. shut out those voices mm-hmm. and just, if, if you just want to sit with your baby for, mm-hmm. if you just want to do that and that's okay, like to trust that, I think. Mm-hmm. 100%. Feeling, not confident so then you start mm-hmm. questioning your decisions so then you start reaching out at other things and then it becomes a little bit of a, a soup yeah um, but it, the soup is like oh, so it depends on how you look at that right because i also encourage moms to be like oh i heard that little nugget on this podcast today and i really resonated with that piece so i'm going to take right. that and put it in my pocket i didn't really like what they said about this so i'm just going to leave that oh and then right. this person over here i really like what she said about solids or whatever or this person here about the emotions. Oh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like put that in the back of my head and remember that right. piece. But I didn't like this other piece, so just leave that piece. That didn't resonate with you. Just leave it. Just right. take what right. resonates with you. And this is where we're all on a very unique motherhood journey. We all have different children. We all have different routines. We all have different things that we love to do with our kids, and all of that is wonderful. Yeah, I love that. Kylie, I do have to finish up. Yes. I would love <laughs> to have goodbye. you. I would love to have you back on. Um, tell us quickly about your book, where people can find you, um, and we can continue out this conversation at another time because I'd love to have you back on. Because I think there's so many things that. I know. Right. I mean, even you could go by yeah. months, right? It's like yeah. zero to three. Let's chit chat about well, it. Well, and so Please. this is exactly what my book does, Mothering from Within. And this is really, I wrote it for, it's finding clarity, ease, and trust in your motherhood journey. And I wrote it for um, babies zero to two, but there's like lots of really great advice that will take you well into the preschool age as well. But I, I talk about all of the things I teach about. So about sleep, about development, about reflux, about feeding, about solids, like intro to solids. There's also a chapter on sensory processing um, and how we really are sensory beings and all why all of that is important. We talk about temperament in here. And this is meant to be a book that is like a resource book, right? So if you if you're like, oh, I want to know more about reflux. Okay, let me go to the reflux chapter, right? You don't you could read it cover to cover, but that's not necessarily how I designed it. It does flow if you want to read it that way, but it's meant to be a resource kind of book where it's kind of like your best friend that's like on your, you know, night table where you're like, oh, I have a question about this. Okay, let me find that. <laughs> I love right? that. Yeah. Um, and so that's all focused on developmental kind of appropriateness, like what it's developmentally driven, it's attachment focused, um, but the underlying theme is always trusting your instincts. Does this resonate? Does it feel light? Does it feel, you know, like love, basically? Like, does it feel easy? Does right. this this piece of information, yeah. does that feel easy in my body? And trusting that. Right. Um, and so people can find me on Instagram. I'm the Holistic Baby Guru. And then my website is just kylieetz.com. Perfect. I'll try to include... I'll make sure to include those in the description yeah. so people can find you. Perfect. Now, Kylie, thank you so much for your time. This was amazing. I'd love to have you back on. Um, I really loved having a conversation with you. I hope yeah. I hope people found something they can pull from. And perhaps they found something like, hey, I don't agree with this. And maybe it secured a decision they've mm-hmm. made. Like, hey, I'm glad that we're doing this differently. Or mm-hmm. I'm glad, you know, mm-hmm. um, I do think it's important to hear different things. Because then it helps you like, hey, maybe I'll try that and it'll help me. Or I'm glad we're doing this other thing and it's working for me, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, thanks for having me. This was fun. Thank you so much. Bye, Kylie. Thank you. 
Thank you, everybody. Um, what a wonderful, what a wonderful discussion. I absolutely love talking to her. I hope she um, is willing to come back. I hope all of you have a very beautiful weekend. Have so much fun. Um, if you're a parent, have fun with your babies. And remember to trust your instinct and that you are doing a great job. I love you. I'll see you next time.